In this video, I have a brand new review for you for a product that I unboxed not that long ago. It's the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra Wireless Xbox Controller. And I want to thank, first and foremost, Turtle Beach for providing me their controller for review purposes. Now, if you haven't, though, yet, please subscribe to us here on the domain Gaming Pop Culture Entertainment. We cover all those things from video games to movies. We even go to conventions, which we're excited to be going to several this year, such as Squared Circle Expo, PopCon, Lexington, Toy and Comic Con, and so many more. So be on the lookout for those vlogs and more videos, but please subscribe to us if you don't already. So I want to talk about this controller. I want you to I want to show you real quick. It does work. It is on because you're going to see some clips of me trying to get this thing to turn on and work because what happened was... I had this sitting on the dock overnight, and um, it when I, when I went to pick it up, it was all lit up, it was on, and it was frozen. The LED screen was frozen, and it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't connect to my Xbox. And after I held the Xbox button down to turn it off, it just wouldn't turn back on. So clearly, you guys can see <laughs> the controller is on. It is operational. It's working. You guys can see, like you know, go through the little the, the menus and stuff like that here. It works, all right? The controller does work. So what I want you to see is what I went through, and I'm going to show you guys how I fixed the problem. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. All right, so I've got the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra. It is plugged in using the cord that comes with it, right? You guys can see that there. There's my Xbox Series X. It's plugged in. And you can see the cord is, in fact, in there. And when I push down, it does nothing. Absolutely nothing. It won't turn on. So, yeah, nothing. No power. I'll, I'll hold it down for a little bit longer. We'll see. About 10 seconds here. We'll see if it does anything. And nothing. Not a single thing. So, yeah. All right. So, here is the dock. It is plugged in to the Xbox Series X. The dock's not even lighting up. Maybe if I hold the button down. Now, when I put the controller on it here, it's supposed to light up and charge. However, it's doing absolutely nothing. So I don't know if my controller is just bricked or what. So I'm gonna have to um, plug this into the into my laptop and see if it if it can be updated. But right now, this controller is just bricked. It's like literally doing nothing. I've had it on its charge for a while, and when I went to go use it, it was lit up, and it said it was at 86% battery, and the LEDs, or the RGBs rather, were lit up, but when I pulled it up, it did nothing. So, yeah. And then I turned it off by holding down the Xbox button, but it does nothing. Like, see, even if I hold the button down, it does not light up. It should be lighting up right there. So let's connect it to the uh, laptop and see see if we can get to update through the uh, Turtle Beach app. All right, so I'm at the laptop and I've got the Turtle Beach Control Center 2 um, downloaded on my laptop. This is what you're supposed to use to make sure your controller is updated. You guys can see I have the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra uh, right here, the new controller. And uh, I'm going to try plugging it in to see if the app recognizes it. So let me get this cord real fast. What did I do with it? All right. So I got the cord. So I'm gonna, you're going to see in real time me plug it in. 
It is plugged into the laptop. So my laptop just made a sound. And we'll see. Let me uh, point this down just a little bit here. Let's see if the app recognizes the controller. So nothing. So there appears to be some recognition. You guys hear the noise. But there's, but there's nothing. So it feels like my thing is brit. Let me plug this into the. Uh, let me plug it into the dock, and then let me try putting my phone, or my phone, my controller on here. Nothing. So it feels to me like it's bricked. It just does not turn on anymore. It does not turn on. That's a shame. This is a $200 controller. You can tell it's plugged in. It's lit, it's it's lit up. This is the dock for this is the dock for it. And nothing. Nothing. Once again, I'll put the dock to the side. We'll plug it up to You heard the little, you heard the little ding. So that lets you know that it's plugged in. And when I hold it down, you'll hear the little thing again. Yeah, it's not showing it's connected. Let's try a different USB port. Let's try the other USB ports. Okay, different USB port. It's making the connection sound. So nothing. This is this is not good. Not good at all. You see the whole screen there. There's nothing. Nothing. I even show the bottom. See, look, nothing. The controller's not on. There's no other switches. This is not how you turn it on, by the way. You have to hold the Xbox button down. Yeah. This is a... Um, this is a dead controller. All right. Well, let me talk about it more. So I just wanted to show one more thing on my laptop. You can see all my devices up here that I have connected to my laptop. It actually does show the Stealth Ultra as connected. It's just not, it's just not on. See, it's like, it doesn't, it's just not coming on. Nothing. Just want to let you guys know, because I know some people will probably be like, well, is it showing up in your device settings on your laptop? And yeah, it's there, but it's not, it's not showing up and there's no, I don't see any settings for it. So, so yeah. So you saw my frustration. I obviously had trying to get the controller to work. And as I said at the beginning of this video, it, it works. How did I get it to work? Well, I sent an email out to a contact I have 
that uh, works between me and Turtle Beach, and they said that all I had to do was, and I know, I, I must have overlooked this, was actually turn the controller on the back, and there's a little hole here, you guys can see, and that is a reset button. So you just take a little, you know, pin or something, and you just put it in there like so, and you push a button, and it'll reset the controller. Now, I will say that I had not updated the firmware when I did all that. The firmware on here is now updated, and I have not had that issue happen again. So I highly recommend once you get this out of the box, before you do really much of anything else, update the firmware. Now, how you go about doing that, it's pretty simple. You uh, connect this. You're, you're going to take the plug that came with it, the USB-C uh, charger cord. You're going to plug it into your laptop. You're going to download the Control Center 2 app, and that is how you're going to update the firmware. Now, speaking of that app, you're going to see here that app in action on my laptop. Once you plug that in, it's going to recognize your controller. It's going to allow you to uh, change the button layout and things like that, allow you to even customize the four buttons on the back and choose which buttons you want. You'll be able to see that here in this in this clip. You'll also be able to recognize, like, you know, set the dead zones for your triggers. You're also going to be able to uh, calibrate the controller and make sure that the controller works and is functioning properly. You'll also be able to set your own custom profile. You saw earlier there where I was able to uh, name one of my profiles Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, so that way I know which game I'm playing for my layouts and etc. You're also going to be able to change the LED colors on there and more. So I highly recommend downloading Control Center 2. So you'll be able to uh, do what you need to with this. However, the good part about it is you don't really need Control Center 2 app all that much for when it comes to customizing the buttons and everything. The only thing you're going to really need it for is to update the firmware in this controller, but also to be able to name your profiles on here. Now, at first, I didn't think you could do that, but if you want to name and customize your profiles, which I'll show you real quick here, you got your uh, you got your profiles, and see how I have one that says cod mw3 you'll be able to only do that in control center 2 app for your desktop so make sure you download that app on your computer pc what have you so you can name your profile so let's get into this controller All right that's what you're here for it does work so first and foremost i like these little grips on the side i do like them they they only cover this area so you're really you're, you're getting this section of your hand covered only problem is there is no coverage here or here under the triggers so really most of what you're holding with your fingers is not getting covered by the grips so my thing is if they ever do a stealth ultra 2 or maybe even a stealth stealth ultra pro because that's how they tend to name things i hope that they include this grip and it kind of goes more back here when I'm holding the controller so I get that grip feel. Uh, other things I do like is I like the programmable buttons. You've got four programmable buttons here that you can use as well. So these will be able to allow you to be set. You can just go in here to your buttons and I'll show you how I got to that menu. So you go to your buttons. So you're gonna hit the plus button. That's how, that's how you are able to uh, Go from using this controller to play a game with to using the LED screen. You hit Y, go to your buttons, and then you've got your programs. And you can hit it, and then you can choose what button you want that uh, programmable button to be used for. Fortunately, you can't use this for start or select or anything like that. Um, you also cannot use this as a trigger, but I can understand why. Uh, you can use it for LB and RB, though, but other than that, that's it. Um, you also cannot use these as a... Uh, does it allow you to use it as a click? Oh, it does, yeah. Left stick button and right stick button, so there you go. All right. Uh, other than that, um, so I do like these. Um, now, uh, the biggest thing here, obviously, about this controller is the LED screen and the RGB lighting. You can change the RGB lighting here by going to the plus button there. 
there is a lighting there it is <laughs> there's a lighting mode <laughs> there and you can change the color so if you notice you've got several different light do uh, two-tone colors you also have just some you know uh, solid colors as well it's like if you want green we can do green and then you have the ability to uh, change the effect so if you want it breathing you want it static you want it dynamic etc you can do that here as well so I like the RGB. Only problem with the RGB is it doesn't go to the back. Notice it doesn't light up back here. It only lights up right in here. I don't understand why you would think. I mean, I, I guess it's just because your hands are covering it. So I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. So, but it lights up mostly right there. So that's the reason why. <laughs> Random Alexa went off, uh, but uh, that's the reason why it's not gonna um, be lit up. Is because your hands are covering. So I don't want to think about that till now. Um, other thing too is it does have a social feature to it. So if you have this connected to your uh, Control Center Two app on your phone, you do have a social button here. You can see it, is, and it lets you know. This will actually display your notifications from your phone. So if you get text messages, emails. The notifications from social media like Facebook, Twitter, what have you, they will pop up on here, which I think is really, really cool. So that way, if you miss a text or something, you won't while you're playing a game. You don't have to worry about picking up your phone and checking and all that. They're going to pop up right here. And once they do, this will, number will go from zero and show you how many notifications you have on your phone. Um, this also does come with two uh, covers for your sticks. So if you want better thumb stick control, it gives you that. But let's get into the negatives. The negatives on this controller, first and foremost, I don't like how loud it is. You hear that? It's just clicky. I'll put it up here to my mic. Clicky. Triggers, a little loud. And these are the, that's the buttons too. You hear that? It's loud. I also especially do not like this D-pad. D-pad, not a fan of it. So here's what the D-pad sounds like, too. Listen, I'll put it up to my mic. You hear that? That's just normal clicking. That's just normal pushing of the D-pad. I don't like it. I don't. Not a fan. Not a fan of how loud things are. Maybe some controller ASMR? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but not a fan of that. So that's, that's my one big thing. Second big thing is... If you're expecting this to be like the Elite controller that Xbox makes, you're going to be disappointed because you cannot take off any parts on this controller. You can't take off the, the joysticks are not removable. Uh, sorry, the thumbsticks are not removable. The D-pad is not replaceable on here. You can't take the D-pad off. Um, obviously, these programmable buttons are staying in place and they don't kind of stick out like the ones on the Elite 2. These are melded into the controller. There's no... Um, customization of any parts that you can take and replace. So if you're looking for taller uh, thumbsticks, you're not going to get that here. You're not going to get that at all. Now, it does come with a carrying case, which I do like. It's really, really nice. Um, it does have your little hair trigger thing. So if you want to make the, instead of having the uh, triggers go down all the way, you can slide that over. And now they won't go down as far. If you want that hair trigger, if you're playing Call of Duty and stuff like that, you want that hair trigger, which is nice. I do like that. Um, outside of that, though, there is there's no customization on here outside of the RGB. That's about it. Uh, and of course, your profiles and stuff and the lighting. Um, it's the buttons are loud. I, I don't necessarily. I'm not a fan of that aesthetic. That like mechanical aesthetic. I'm not a fan of that. Um, other than that. Uh, I have enjoyed this controller um, outside of what you saw earlier, which I was kind of worried that I almost had a Brit controller. Uh, however, once again, I want to make it very clear that this is working now. I've not had that issue since I updated the firmware. So thankfully, that issue has been solved. I recommend highly once you get this out of the box, 
please update the firmware. Now, if you're wondering, is this controller worth it? Because it is a $200 controller. It's 199 dollars Is it worth it? Kind of depends on what you're looking for. If, if you want a controller that has really cool RGB, and I like the LED, although I wish this screen was a touch screen instead of just having the button here, but it's still kind of nice. Uh, if you want customized profiles that you can name and have all sorts of options when it comes to like the dead zone sticks on, and things and your calibration to make sure this does not, this also claims they have anti-drift as well. So that's a nice thing. This may be the controller for you. However, if you're looking for something more like the Elite controller that Xbox sells and you want to be able to like have more control of like customizing your thumbsticks and be able to remove them and change the D-pad and things like that, this might not be the controller for you. Now, me personally, I am not a fan of how loud this is when playing it. I don't like that I can't customize the D-pad, so this controller isn't necessarily for me. So, really, is it worth it? That really just ultimately depends on what you are looking for. Now, you also, if you plug in a Turtle Beach headset to this, you're going to have equalizer options here. They're all grayed out. You can't see them, but you have an EQ here, and then you have your mic muting here. So you have more options. This does work really well with, uh, you know, the stealth uh, headsets and things that they sell. So this does work well with them. So when paired with a Turtle Beach headset, some of the newer ones anyway, this is a great combination. I do recommend it. Um, for me, I've enjoyed it. I Other than that problem you saw earlier, that's the only one I've had so far outside of it. I just am not a fan of this. I do like the lighting. I think lighting is super cool and be able to change it have different profiles and things like that um it does have a dock that this sits on to and you plug it into your console and, ha and you, it has a wireless transmitter that plugs into that and you just set it there and it will charge your controller um which is also nice um outside of that i've enjoyed it i personally don't think i would pay 200 bucks for this controller uh but i'm not saying that you shouldn't um i think it's a great controller for what it's for especially if you're playing you know competitive games like call of duty fortnite and things like that if that's what you're looking for because there's so many customization options here for you pro players so this would be the controller for you once again if you're looking for more customization options with the thumbstick stuff this is not the controller for you so outside of that once again thanks to turtle beach for providing this controller for me to review I will leave a link down in the description below where you can purchase this controller on the Turtle Beach website. And uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. Once again, please subscribe, like the video. Let me know in the comment section below if you've bought this controller, if you like this controller. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.